Really continue. We will stay on till it's done. Here we go. Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I hope that uh, you found something uh, of value to take away from the keynote um, address. I want to start off by making sure that everyone who is here with us tonight um, or indeed uh, looking for the admissions process for private colleges and universities. Um, so if you're not in the right space, this is an opportunity now um, to try to find the group that you were looking for. Uh, my name is Derek Richardson and I am the principal at Sammamish High School and I will be serving tonight um, as your moderator. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through. Uh, we've uh, assembled um, central office staff has put together a list of frequently asked questions that um, usually occur when we have these types of presentations and we're going to go through that list of questions and then at the end of that we'll get an opportunity to um, have some Q&A uh, from you. Um, we have a member of our team um, who is um, will be fielding the questions that you'll be placing in a minute. I'll tell you how to do that. But at this time, if Ms. Robinson is available, I want to give her an opportunity to just pop on real quick and introduce herself. Hi, I'm Anicia Robinson and I'm a counselor at Bellevue High School, so I'll be managing the Q&A uh, questions in the chat bar. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Um, so in order to um, have your questions um, or send us a question, um, go to the Q&A feature. You can see we have it illustrated here um, in the PowerPoint and you just simply click uh, on that uh, button that says um, Q&A, you hover over it and it'll pop up and say Q&A feature. Um, then you just type in your question. Uh, it's also an opportunity to go to settings and choose the language um, or uh, choose a language for a closed caption um, so that you can have access uh, to this presentation in the language of, of preference. Uh, and so with that being said, we will move from here to uh, what you came tonight and is to hear from the admissions counselors and admissions directors at these fine institutions that you can see um, that are uh, listed on our PowerPoint right here. So we will start it off and get it going and we'll start with uh, Mark at the University of Puget Sound. Hi, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. My name is Mark Howard. I'm an admission counselor at the University of Puget Sound. I've been working here for about two and a half years, but I'm also a graduate of the class of 2016. Uh, so I've definitely been in the area for a while. Uh, the University of Puget Sound is located in Tacoma, Washington in the north end. Uh, so 35 miles south of Seattle, so close by. Um, just really a nice small private college. But yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, thank you, um, Mark. Uh, from hey, Mark, before we switch from you, can you just give us kind of an overview of the admissions process? Yep, sorry, totally blanked on that. Yeah, so the admission process, uh, just in terms of uh, University of Puget Sound, we're pretty straightforward. We are on available on the Common application, so a place where you'd apply to many other uh, many other universities. Uh, our application process is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have one essay. We are test optional and we have been test optional for a while. So standardized test scores are not required. Uh, you're not going to be weighed differently just because you don't have your test scores. Uh, so it's uh, really great if you're looking to uh, be looked at for more than just kind of those uh, general numbers, your GPA and your test scores. We're a holistic review school. We look at everything that is submitted within the application. We have a early action, early decision deadline, which is November 1st, and a regular decision deadline, which is January 15th. Hey, thanks, Mark. From there, um, Scott, I think we'll go to Andrea. 
Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, my name is Andrea Frangi, and I'm the Regional Director of Admission for the George Washington University, located four blocks away from the White House in sunny slash snowy Washington, D.C. Um, I'm a Regional Director, though, so I myself work with students from the Pacific Northwest, and, and I am based in uh, what is currently known as West Seattle Island because, you know, bridges break and things like that. Um, but GW is celebrating our 200th anniversary this year. Um, we have students coming from all 50 states. We have students joining us from all over the world. Uh, and we're really proud of the fact that, like many of the private institutions in this country, we do a very holistic review for admission. And you're going to hear that word holistic over and over again tonight. And for that, I apologize. Um, but it's a good term to familiarize yourself with. Uh, like Mark um, and the folks at the University of Puget Sound, we are on the common application. Um, we do have an early decision application deadline, which is going to be a binding opportunity for students whose ride or die happens to be GW. Um, for those of you who want to play the field a little bit, regular decision might be a better bet. Um, that's going to give you a chance to see uh, financial aid packages from other institutions and do a little compare and contrast before the May 1st national deposit deadline. As far as academic strength and what we're looking for, what we want you to do is challenge yourself appropriately within the context of the high school that you attend. Um, so if you have a particular area of interest like engineering or business, um, then maybe you want to be taking a little bit more math. Uh, if you're somebody who's super passionate about creative writing or English, then you know math is going to be important, but it's not going to be the most important part of your transcript. Um, so it's really about finding what is going to challenge you, but what is also going to allow you to find balance in your life as well. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Andrea. Scott, from there, I think we will go next to Nate. Hey, all. Um, my name's Nate Maniter. I'm an Associate Director of Admission here at Gonzaga University. Uh, obviously, we're located over here in Spokane, Washington, over on the east side of the state of Washington. We're a Jesuit Catholic university, um, medium-sized, uh, nationally um, ranked as a, as a national university, so lots of different majors, um, most popular programs in business, engineering, and the health sciences. Um, as it pertains to our admission process, the, the thing that is different than the others, we are a holistic review process, we are test optional, um, and uh, we're on the Common App, so that's very similar to the to the first two we heard from. Uh, at Gonzaga, we've, we've tried to make it as straightforward of an application process as possible. We only have one application deadline, so we don't do early action, we don't have regular decision, uh, it's just you apply by December 1st uh, at Gonzaga, and um, yeah, so that's, that's the thing that is a little bit different. For all of y'all in attendance, um, I'm, I'm the admission representative that works with all of our students from, from the Bellevue Sammamish area. So I'm happy to help along the way. Hey, thanks, Nate. Um, Anna, we're so happy that you made it in. Um, if you want to uh, pop on and introduce yourself um, and also just give a brief overview of the admissions process at the University of Redlands. Yes, good evening. It only took me half an hour to get in, so we're good. So, um, but yes, my name is Anna Egeter. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at the University of Redlands. Redlands is located in um, Southern California, about halfway between Long, uh, between Palm Springs and the Los Angeles area. We are Liberal Arts and Sciences University, um, like all the other folks on the on the, the panel. Um, we use the common application and have um, the typical deadlines of early decision, early action, regular decision, all those sorts of things. Um, we are test optional, and as I say, we are test optional forever um, because we are able to um, we are able to uh, review your application, whether or not you've submit your, submitted your test score. So we leave that really up to you as, in terms of what you want to do. I do also work with all the students from Pacific North Northwest. I myself am a native of the Skagit Valley, um, and so I'm, I'm here from the area. Hey, thanks, Anna. We're happy that you were uh, able to get in. Um, so let's get this started. Um, I think Andrea touched on this a little bit when we're talking about 
academic strength of transcript? Like how important is it? Uh, AP versus core classes? Um, is there a specific number of AP classes recommended? Um, students and parents always want to know how many AP classes should be taken. And that's open to the panel, but if it makes it easier, if anybody wants to respond, if you could just go with a hand up and then I will recognize you. I got made up there. I'm, I'm up. Thank you. Um, OK, because I don't see it. Thank you. No, yeah, no problem at all. Um, yeah, I think at Gonzaga, and it's probably going to be true for elsewhere, the number one indicator of future academic success is past academic success. So this idea of academic strength, of completing successfully a college prep curriculum is going to be one of the most important things that all colleges look at. Um, how many AP courses should you take? Uh, that's an answer that you and your parent and your counselor can answer a heck of a whole lot better than an admission counselor that doesn't know you very well can uh, answer. Uh, it's going to depend on each student. Uh, AP honors courses aren't necessarily required. Um, we don't want to see you overdo it, right? Mental health and keeping your, your mental health in, a, in a, a good place is really, really important to you being successful as a student. So don't overdo it. Um, I know I'm, I'm not, you want me to tell you three. That's the number you should take. <laughs> but, it, but it depends on who you are as a student. Um, you know, where your strengths are, um, where your interests are, right? Um, and I don't think there's any one number that's correct for everybody. So um, that would be our approach here at Gonzaga is is take care of yourself holistically, right? Make sure you're in, in a good place. Um, challenge yourself where you feel comfortable um, and successful completion of a solid college prep curriculum is the number one indicator of future success in academia. Thanks, Nate. Mark. Hi. Yeah, uh, that's a really great just overview. Uh, it goes for Puget Sound as well that we do want to make sure that you're successful in the courses that you're deciding to take. Uh, you know, registering for all of those AP courses, while it may look great and rigorous on the transcript, if you're not carrying through with the success, it's not going to uh, translate, you know, to a positive answer from a university, but also looking at the core classes as well. We want to see you take those core classes, uh, science, math, uh, taking it past the requirement for graduation. I know that there may be a two year requirement for foreign language, three year for science. Uh, if you can carry those, uh, you know, uh, science and math, I see mainly uh, all through four years, that's always going to be great. It's going to make sure that you have a strong, uh, rigorous transcript uh, throughout. It doesn't have to be the advanced courses, say if uh, science and math are not your strength. You can still take those, uh, you know, AP or honors courses in the English or in the humanities or the social sciences, but just taking the science and math uh, throughout your uh, throughout high school, always make sure that you have that solid, uh, solid rigor throughout. Hey, thanks, Mark. Um, I don't see any other takers on that question, so we'll move on. Um, so essay questions, what are you guys looking for? Um, how are essays and supplements used? Uh, can you tell if a student had a lot of help writing an essay? Does it really even matter? Um, and how important are the short answer questions to the application process? So if you're putting the hands up, I think Scott's managing the hands because I can't see those. Um, and Scott will promote you which means that you're going to go live and then I will call on you if you cannot see that the live screen is around you. I don't, I don't want to be that guy on the panel that always goes first, <laughs> so I need somebody else to, to step up also. But um, I would say from, from a writing perspective, answering these 